Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. It's not Wednesday, but we've got a wee little knife here. This is the Tulip by Best Tech, designed by Ostep Hell. Oh, and if you didn't understand that intro, uh, it's been over a year, I think, since I've been doing wee Wednesdays. Uh, I went through almost every San Ren Mew knife that they had on the market, and they've got a lot of very small knives smaller than this even, a lot of them. And uh, I called it Wee Wednesday because I did those on Wednesdays. So this little guy is not a budget knife. Uh, retail, I think is over $100. I don't remember exactly. I'm not one of those, I'm not great with the exact numbers remembering exactly what I paid for something. Uh, but I bought this finally, and Ostepel is my favorite knife designer. So I really, really wanted one of these. Uh, I got this thing from uh, White Mountain Knives. And uh, since I want to get every Ostep Hell knife I can get, I bought this. But the tulip comes two ways, a slip joint or a frame lock. And uh, yeah, I got the slip joint version uh, because, you know, I like slip joints to start with. And uh, I want to carry this thing every once in a while, actually quite often. And there's a slip joint you can take almost anywhere, anytime. It's just no risk to have one, especially when it's under three inches uh, or under six centimeters even. So this is got, this is got, this has M390 stainless steel, nice, and titanium everywhere, titanium pocket clip. Uh, it's got dual detent slip joint in here. And I'll show you what that uh, means. So yeah, make yourself comfortable. This is gonna take about 20 minutes. Let's get to the tabletop and take a good look at this thing. As we get into this, uh, first I'm going to cover the price because this is usually a budget channel and uh, if you just can't afford it, some of you might not want to watch this. What does this thing sell for? Uh, White Mountain Knives is where I got mine, 126 US dollars. Uh, with coupon code CCE, you save 10%. That equals $113.40 US. The Canadian equivalent from White Mountain Knives is 144 Canadian dollars, roughly, as the currency changes regularly. That's about $65 less than what you can find it for in Canada. The only store I found it in Canada was at Hero Outdoors, $209.99. Yeah. No, no, sorry. $200.99. So $57 more in Canada than it is to buy it from White Mountain Knives. Plus you're gonna pay taxes in Canada, you know, but yeah, that can be a fair bit of taxes too. And uh, White Mountain Knives ships to Canada, no problem. And both of these knives should have no problem getting across the border. Certainly the slip joint one has zero issue at all. The Damascus version at uh, White Mountain Knives is $212 US, save 10% equals $190 80 cents. That equals about 242 Canadian dollars. And at Hero Outdoors, it's $335.99 Canadian. So 242 or 335, 336. Your choice. Literally, it's your choice. I didn't find this at a lot of other stores. I found it in Europe at one store that had the best price, uh, mygoodknife.com, a Finland store. Uh, 219.9 euros, uh, Lamnia, in either the frame lock or the slip joint version, uh, and they charge 137.32 euros. Knives and Tools has got some of these for 149 euros. You know, that's just the way it goes. This thing is totally UK friendly, so at least the slip joint version. So I was hoping I could find it there, but no, I could not find it there either. Let's, uh, go on with the other part of my intro that I recorded earlier. So first, let's just take a look at this thing. Yes, it's 3D milled titanium. It comes in several colors. Here's a few of them. With these curvy lines in here, it just, the light just goes, bounces off of it very well. This is sort of blue, sort of purple, depending on which way it gets turned and it just looks very, very nice. The show side, you know, it's got 
looks like buttons, but those are the uh, screws. And on the other side, T8, T8, very nice. Pocket clip. It actually looks okay without the pocket clip. It has, you can see a little bit, I'll show you a video. If you take the pocket clip off, yeah, you can see a little bit there, but look at, compared to the size of my thumb, it's very little. It actually looks pretty neat, pretty nice, it looks pretty nice without the pocket clip, but uh, I like how the pocket clip looks, so yeah, I would leave the pocket clip on there. So yeah, looks nice that way. We've got a lanyard option back here. So you can tie off a lanyard back there if you want to. Small backspace with a couple little jimps on there. Pocket clip, titanium, got good retention there. And it's a front flipper, just like that. Let's do a little size comparison with the uh, Ontario Rat, or the Ontario Rat 1, I should say. There it is. Ah, uh, yeah. That doesn't quite work. Let's put the blade in there. There we go. It's about the size of the blade of the Ontario Rat 1. Some of you might have this knife. This is the uh, San Remus 7010. Still available in a number of different options. Um, my review of this is fairly old, and so, you know, the video is not up to my current standards right now. But this knife is still available, no longer at under 10 US dollars, but uh, you can get it for under 15 or around 15 now. Uh, 8CR13 MOV stainless steel on most of them. I think there have been some runs where they use 12C27 from Sandvik. And yeah, it's a whole lot bigger than this guy. And I know a number of you that have been with my channel for a long time you know, know a lot about this knife. So this knife here, what do we got? We got a drop point Kiridashi. This is, the blade style is a Kiridashi. M390, like I said, stone wash on the flats. A little swedge here and, uh, you know, a totally flat edge there. Fairly thin behind the grind, but not crazy thin. Um, although the sharpening was not done very well on this one, but that's easy for me to fix. We've got... Uh, Jimping on the spine here and jimping up here so that when you want to flip it open, put your finger over it, hold the knife like this in your thumb, your finger on the other side, and just flip it back. With the slip joint, I can just push it back closed again. The frame lock will be on the same side as the pocket clip if you get the frame lock version. Other than that, they're identical, same colors and everything. It's got a good look to it. Uh, the writing on the knife here is nice and small. It's not black at all. If the light hits it just the right way, it looks like it's dark writing, but it's no, it's just laser etched. And then on this side, we've got the Best Tech Knives logo. It's a very nice knife. I like the look of it, like the feel of it. I actually wish they would have done the lanyard hole here thing even a little bit smaller, but it's unobtrusive, so that's not bad at all. Well, this is the perfect kind of knife for urban EDC because 95% of what urban EDC carry means, I'm going to open a package now. And this thing can easily open up any kind of package you want to open up. That's what this thing can do. So for the vast majority of what you want to do, this thing can do that. Do you want to call this a gentleman's folder? Yeah, sure, you could call it that. It certainly doesn't have the traditional long, skinny format that a gentleman's folder usually has. But it's got a sophistication to it. It looks, it looks really, really nice. It's a fine knife. There's even jipping a little bit right there on the belly. So that when you're holding it like this, between your thumb on this side and your index finger over here, it's not closing. It can't close because it has to pivot and... There's no place for it to pivot to. It might move a little bit like this, but it's not going to close on your fingers. So it's a very, very safe slip joint. Maybe the safest slip joint out there. It's got um, the liners on either side are sticking out. Let's do it this way. You've got two liners on the sides 
And then there's a detent ball on either side. Let's say that's on the tip of my fingerprint right there. And those are squeezing in onto the tang of the blade and the blade's got two holes in it. So then when you go to close it, it pushes them apart so that it can close, but the pressure's still holding it. So detent to hold it open. That's why you can hear it click. And detent to hold it closed. So if you're used to a knife having a detent to hold it closed, just put it, another one on the other side and put a second hole on the blade and you've got a double detent system. Let's show you by taking the thing apart. So here it is taken apart. Uh, you can see we've got the ceramic ball bearings in phosphor bronze cages. Uh, we've got stop pin that's uh, on the uh, blade of the knife. It's one of those integral stop pins. We've got uh, two detent holes on either side of the knife. Actually, no, this one's only got one. Ah, so there's one detent. This is the detent to hold it closed. These are the detents to hold it open. So there's two detents holding it open. So it's like this when it's open. So closed like this, it's coming open. It comes back, the stop pin hits that spot at the same time that that detent ball hits that little hole right there. But there's one on each side of the blade to hold it into the open position. That's how that part works. So we've got nice ceramic detents. We've got nice ceramic ball bearings, uh, very light pieces of titanium that are thoroughly milled. Uh, the pocket clip sits in that 3D milled section there. It only fits one way and it clicks all the way in, holds in place. And, uh, that screw holds it on. So it's actually a very simple design. And, um, oh, yep, backspacer is also titanium. So you can clearly see how the uh, lanyard hole works now. You put the paracord in one side, comes around that pin or around that uh, piece back here, comes out the other side. And you can also see that uh, both of these are D-shaped pins for the pivot pin and for the body pin. And that keeps them from spinning, so that's how they can make them a nice show side. So that's how the thing was made. I'll put it back together and we'll uh, keep on going. Okay, now let's go over all the sizes and stuff. Wow, that huge measuring tape is on the screen. <laughs> 50 grams, 1.75 ounces. The factory sharpness, it's about 250. That's not very well done, and I'll tell you why in just a little while. It certainly could be a whole lot sharper than that, and it will be once I've sharpened it. Uh, the measurements, though. Cutting edge length, 35.43 millimeters, which is 1.3945 inches. The blade length tipped to the G to the titanium, 29.23 millimeters, which is 1.5445 inches. The blade thickness is uh, 2.47 millimeters, which is 97 thousandths of an inch. The blade depth, this measurement, 22.67 millimeters, 0.8925 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, right there, 0.45 millimeters, 17 and a half thousandths of an inch. So it's thin enough to be super sharp. The grind angles, 24.8 degrees, 28.7 degrees, naughty, naughty, naughty sharpener. Uh, it was sharpened very poorly. The grind angle's bad, and whatever stone they used to sharpen it is a very coarse stone. And I'll show you why in just a minute, or how I know. Uh, handle length, 60.6 millimeters, which is 2.3855 inches. Grip area, it's about 60 uh, millimeters. Uh, that's about two and a quarter inches, a little over that. The handle thickness, and I didn't do it on the screws, just the titanium, not counting the pocket clip. 10.53 uh, millimeters, which is 0.4145 inches. The uh, handle depth, the widest spot, is 21.64 millimeters, 
0.852 inches. Uh, the knife depth when it's closed is uh, 25.15 millimeters, 0.99 of an inch. And the total length when it's open is 99.48 millimeters, which is 3.9165 inches. So just under 10 centimeters or four inches long. Yeah, this thing can easily sit nicely in your coin pocket. I already went over the prices, so now the biggest con, the only con that I have about this knife is a temporary condition, a very minor temporary condition, how badly it was sharpened. Because I can sharpen it myself. Most people can sharpen knives quite easily. Uh, clamp it into my sharpening system to measure the grind angles. And when I found out badly it was ground, I started sharpening it right away and then I stopped. And uh, the grind angles being so poor, I decided, well, let's just sharpen it at 20 degrees per side for now. Even though M390, I could put it to 15 degrees per side and have no problem, especially for a knife like this that's not going to be pounding on things. And then I took some close-up pictures, and what do you see? The shoulder has been sharpened by me, but not the cutting edge. And so you see you know, a fairly fine sharpening on the shoulder of the cutting edge. And then right by the edge, you see coarse marks. And that shows how coarse of a sharpening stone they use to sharpen this with. I will show you pictures. Uh, actually, I'll try to include them right now of how it looks after I sharpened it to, I don't know, I suspect I'll do 15 degrees per side. I'll tell you when you see the bit of video. This is after I sharpened it. And by the way, I forgot to show you before the blade centering. Perfection. Very nice. And now we've got a nice mirror edge on here. And uh, I decided to go uh, 16 and a half degrees per side. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. And it's still only 19 thousandths. Oh, don't touch that. <laughs> 19 thousandths behind the grind. And uh, sharpness now is about 30 bess. And before I get to the closing comments about this thing, let's see how it does look going into a pocket. Well, that's very close to the camera, but I think it'll work. This is the coin pocket right here. It wants to lift over. There you go. And remember, this is a very close shot. This is the blue version. And yeah, against the uh, denim, it actually looks a little purpley, but uh, at least you sort of have a comparison on uh, what it would look like. I really like how the pocket clip has the nice same flowing lines that the rest of the knife has. It's very well anodized. Good looking knife. Closing comments on this thing. I just think it's an awesome little knife. So there you go. Beautiful knife. Nice flowing system here. Easy to hold easy to use to do the kind of cutting that it's designed to do and it performs well. If they would have sharpened it well from the factory I wouldn't have had any cons at all to give you guys. So I'm glad they gave us at least one. By the way I do accept sharpening jobs especially if you're in Canada you want to get your knife sharpened contact me and I can help you with that. Thank you to my Patreon supporters you guys are great. Thank you to everybody who likes, shares, comments, subscribes, all those other good things. Those things really do help out this channel. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>